So here's something spooky. Just in time for Halloween. It's January. What the f Anyways, thanks to GR, there's being able to use gravitational lensing to understand what the universe looks like, and hopefully one day use that to severely improve our means of space travel. How? Disclaimer, it'll probably be years before we actually figure out how to use dark matter as energy, or know if dark matter can even be used as energy in the first place. Years of science being properly funded, to be specific. But something like dark matter gets really interesting to learn about, especially when it makes you look at the things around you and think, huh, that's cool. So, knowing how much space-time curves allows us to identify how space is structured. We can see regions in space that appear distorted due to gravitational lensing, which is when an object appears different from the way it actually looks. Because light coming from that object runs through a path that isn't exactly straight. Thanks to the massive object warping space-time in between us. So sure, sounds pretty normal so far, but this is where it gets spooky. There are regions that are distorted, but we can't seem to identify 85% of what's causing that distortion. Weirdly, what we see doesn't seem to be enough matter to produce the amount of space-time curvature we observe. Or we just don't know how to detect them yet. Obviously, physicists have called out something dark matter. Now, a main detection technique we have relies on electromagnetic radiation, visible light, infrared, x-rays, other light we can't see but we understand them enough that we can use them to detect things without seeing them. Even glass that we can't completely see with visible light, we can detect with UV. What makes dark matter hard to detect by electromagnetic radiation could be this. A 2013 paper by Ho and Shiro says dark matter could be a kind of particle that has a rare electromagnetic field called an anapole, although this idea was first proposed about 50 years ago. So because of its shape and how its charges are distributed, the electric and toroidal dipoles produce electromagnetic radiation that cancel each other out. Intermission. Electric dipole radiation comes from the interaction of the positive nucleus with negative charges around them, and would look like this. Toroidal dipole radiation comes from the electrons moving around acting like currents. This could be the reason they're so hard to detect because anapoles have a net zero electromagnetic radiation, and therefore can't play with the normal matter we're familiar with in the electromagnetic playground. Also, particles with anapoles are real. They're not just some theoretical thing that may or may not exist. They've been observed in the magnetic structures of cesium-133 and ytterbium-174 nuclei. In addition, dark matter isn't just normal matter that's black. See, we can tell the amount of normal matter in the universe by observing the cosmic microwave background, a map of the very first time photons were able to travel because during the early stages of the universe, everything was so compressed and homogeneous that a photon traveling here to here to here didn't really make any difference. But around the time the universe expanded enough, these photons were able to travel and oftentimes hit matter along the way. And we can see those travels in the CMB. We know these represent normal matter because photons interact with this normal matter. We can also tell the amount of total matter that the universe should have based on the structures seen in the universe. We need enough matter to exert enough gravity towards each other to produce these galaxies and clusters, but again, what we see just isn't enough. Now, dark matter being pretty spread out means if we were to have a spaceship out there, we'd have no problems refilling fuel that can power the ship with near 100% efficiency. As compared to the 0.0001% efficient chemical-based rockets we have today. That is if dark matter were a particle with no electric color or be charge. In other words, if dark matter were its own antiparticle. In other, other words, it has to be able to annihilate itself. I know what you're thinking. What the fuck is going on? But we're getting to the juicy part. Antimatter is something that has the same mass but the opposite charge as its counterpart matter. When these two come into contact, they annihilate each other, leaving us with nothing but an explosion of energy, quantified by the also beloved E equals mc squared. This tells us that a gram of matter and antimatter would produce the energy equivalent to a nuclear bomb exploding. 
So far, combining all the antimatter for normal matter we've ever produced, less than a microgram thanks to these expensive facilities, would not even be enough to heat up tea. Now, how is any matter capable of being its own antimatter? Oppositely charged to its counterpart matter. What's the opposite of zero? An answer could be itself. That could be how dark matter would be its own antimatter. We don't have to spend billions on making the antimatter counterpart of dark matter because it's already its own antimatter. Pretty exciting, especially since researchers from the Western Reserve Academy, Kent State University, and Washington State University have already been conducting studies on antimatter propulsion and storage. Note, dark matter is five times as abundant as normal matter. That's a lot of energy. But if so, shouldn't we be seeing explosions from the universe all the time? One of the answers to that could be that dark matter doesn't interact with itself as easily. If it did, we would see dark matter planets, but we haven't seen any of those yet. That's an additional challenge for dark matter powered spaceships. In the meantime, you can check out my channel for more cool stuff. I make these videos with a lot of love, so don't hesitate in subscribing. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.